I couldn't be any more excited to be here. Um, you know, I think New York is the greatest city in the world. I think City Field is the best ballpark in the major leagues. Um, you know, I love the, it's an incredible, passionate, energized fan base um, that, you know, in, the, in this, the place that the New York Mets organization has in the community. All of those things really excite me. Um, there's a strong core of players, a good blend of youth and experience. Um, of course, anchored by one of the best starting pitchers in the league and, and Jake DeGrom. Um, and overall, I'm, I'm excited to get to work, you know, with Sandy, uh, with Louie and his staff, the rest of the baseball operations staff, you know, as we look to build a, a collaborative and a sustainable baseball operation and culture. Um, ultimately, that'll be reflected by strong performance on the field. So like Sandy said, I'm already on the job. I couldn't be any more excited to be here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to be a Met. Jared is very well respected across baseball, not just respected, but well liked as well. Uh, and being well liked goes a long way uh, toward, toward being successful in this business. Uh, there are a lot of other things that come into play as well. But uh, in, in terms of Jared's personality, not just the fact that he's likable, but then as a Q factor of sorts, but um, uh, really has, uh, you know, the, the vision that we want to uh, execute upon. And how we execute on it is, is really a function of those personal qualities, communication, collaboration, inclusiveness. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, from a personality standpoint, as well as a, a competency standpoint, uh, Jared has tremendous room to grow and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very confident that he has the potential to uh, um, lead this organization over a period of years. Well, there's uh, obviously a chance to really expand on the resources, um, you know, to hire really good people, um, you know, whether that's in the office, in the field, um, as coaches. Um, I think there's a chance to you know, really diversify and, and deepen the, the team, the player pool, the talent pool. Um, you know, Sandy uh, referenced um, my usage of the word flexibility. Uh, I think that's really important, versatility. Um, so yeah, I think there's a real opportunity for that here, um, to add, uh, and as, as far as the, the winning part goes, you know, I've, everywhere I've gone, we've, we've all, it's, it's always been our goal. I think it's the goal of players to win. Um, I think it's the goal of front office people to win coaches to win. So, um, you know, I think it's a challenge and it's something I'm really excited about. Roster depth is important. Um, you know, I think it's, it's critical to have a real deep 40 man roster, especially to, you know, to get through the a full 162 and, and even, you know, coming off of a shortened season last year will could pre present some new challenges. Um, so I think depth stands out. Really well. um, you know, I think, I think that depth runs through the, the pitching rotation, um, you know, lengthening that out a little bit, um, you know, the bullpen with the, with the recent May signing is, is, is looking deeper, but I think we'll continue to push that. And then from a position player standpoint, you know, I think up the middle is really important. I've always felt that way. Um, you know, the catcher position center field, um, you know, and, and, and defensive versatility there too. The more, the more versatile, the more good, versatile, talented players you have, the easier it is to plug players in, um, you know, it gives you leverage in the decisions you make over the course of a year and of a season. So those are things that I'll, I'll work towards immediately. Look, everybody knows how we're positioned right now. That's, there's no secret there. Um, but the fact that we're involved in those conversations, I don't think puts any more pressure on us. I think what the fans want is not that we win the off season, but we win the season. And there are several different ways to achieve that. And, you know, if we have X money to spend, we'll probably spend it, but we have to make decisions about how, how we do that. And um, so, uh, you know, I think we're, we're trying to be judicious, but we're definitely talking and we're definitely in the market and we de definitely have a capacity. So what we really have to do then, uh, given all of those things, resources and so forth, is to make good judgments uh, about what we do and not be compelled to win the off season, but rather have our eye on the regular season. You know, the, the cultural part's big too. You know, it's important um, to, to start to, to build a, a winning culture. And, um, you know, I, one thing we talked about through, throughout the interview process is that that starts in the, at the minor league level, you know, the kind of in the, the edge down there and it starts to trickle up. So, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Ultimately, the players are the ones who, who win a championship. I think we all know that. Um, and, you know, they're the ones that get leaned on the heaviest and, and do the hardest work. Yeah, you know, I don't really want to put numbers or timelines on that. I, I would just say that, like, hearing comments like that motivates me. It really excites me. You know, it shows a strong commitment from ownership 
um, who, who wants to win, who wants to put a winner on the field um, for the fan base in New York. And I completely align with that. Um, it excites me. Um, I, I want those expectations. And I, you know, I, I really, I really want to provide that kind of a, an atmosphere and a situation for the fans of New York. It was nice to see um, Smith break out over the last year and a half or so, um, you know, become, become such a good major league hitter. Um, you know, he has some defensive versatility, which is great. Um, and then Alonzo, you know, to me, is one of the best first basemen in baseball. He's a, he's an offensive threat to hit the ball out to any part of the ballpark every time he comes up to bat. So um, to me, it's a huge plus to have both those guys on the team. They're a big part of what we're doing. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to them or any other players yet. Um, which I'm excited to start doing as kind of um, one of the next things on my agenda. But uh, both those guys are certainly a big part of what we do. I think as far as the communication goes, in my opinion, it's all about relationship building. Um, you know, I really believe in people. Um, I try to be empathetic and authentic uh, when I talk to people. Um, you know, and I, I believe that, the, you know, the scout in the Dominican Republic um, who right now is evaluating a player who might sign for $10,000 is just as important as someone who's trying to sign a big, uh, a big free agent. And I always hope that that is reflected in the way that I treat those people and the questions I ask them and, and how much of the process they feel like. When this one came up, I was so excited. I mean, this is, this is a dream job for me um, for, for, the, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, um, you know, among others. Um, so, you know, once this happened and once, once Sandy and, and the Mets showed interest in, in bringing me on board, um, I became singularly focused on, on this opportunity, and, and I couldn't be any more excited um, to be here today and uh, be a part of this group.